Coronavirus has really put a crimp in our plans to torture your favorite lab rat by making him do crazy, terrifying, uncomfortable, or disgusting things. All in the name of science, of course. But that's when we all got to thinking, if he can't go outside because of the virus, what if we put him in a place where there's no chance of catching the virus? Mostly because everyone there is already dead. And that's exactly what we did, as we challenged our least important staff writer to spend 24 hours locked in a real morgue. What we didn't count on was him accidentally stumbling on photographic proof of the supernatural. 0700 hours. This is the start of my official challenge, 24 hours locked in a morgue. Honestly, who's coming up with these ideas? Spend a day locked in with dead people. The infographic show is really run by a bunch of sadists. So I'm in a small auxiliary morgue in one of the communities outside of Los Angeles. How long it took infographics to find this place and get permission to do this is beyond me, but trust me, those guys and gals have been pretty motivated lately to get me back on the road and doing challenges. I guess everyone's had about enough of coronavirus. Speaking of the virus, sadly people still aren't taking it seriously and the death toll continues to mount. The place I'm at was an old morgue that went unused for a few decades until the more modern facilities became overwhelmed with coronavirus casualties. So this place is what you might call temporary storage, while the morticians get about disinfecting the body and prepping it for a funeral. And this place is too near capacity. It's the weekend though and this is a pretty small community so I was told I shouldn't be disturbed. Then the mortician's assistant said, at least not by the living anyway, and sort of laughed in a way that hinted he was only half joking. I didn't find it funny at all. I tried to get the girlfriend to do this challenge with me, but she flat out refused to go anywhere near a dead body. Hard to blame her. I've seen death before, but sitting in a tiny building stuffed full of corpses is nobody's idea of a good time. Plus, the weather outside is really overcast, which kind of adds to the gloom of the place. There's a main office, a small waiting area of sorts, two private offices which are locked, and the storage examination room which takes up most of the building. The room is extremely chilly, and the temperature is kept really low in order to help keep the bodies from rotting more than normal. The room is even colder than normal now because these bodies are having to be stored for longer than usual thanks to the overflow of COVID victims. I heard some cities are even using refrigerated trucks after running out of morgue space. So, okay, I have to stay in this building for 24 hours. Since the building is being used as overflow, nobody should be coming by to bother me, I was told. At least until I get let out tomorrow morning. The doors are locked and the only way out now for me would be breaking a window, which you best believe I'm ready to do if a zombie situation starts kicking off. I've got some snacks, food to last me my stay, my laptop, and a sleeping bag. There's also a small TV the staff brought out from one of the offices for me. All in all, how hard could this be? 1200 hours. Alright, it's been 5 hours stuck in this building and the weather outside turned from bad to worse. It was overcast at first and then just started raining, which is just perfect. Seriously, it rains so rarely out here in SoCal and it just so happens to start raining on the day I spend in a creepy morgue. I swear, sometimes I think the universe and not just infographic show is out to get me. I went into the storage examination room just out of sheer curiosity and immediately changed my mind. It's freezing in there right now and the smell of chemicals and death is overwhelming. It's hard to describe the smell of a corpse, kind of like old leather with some sickly sweet aroma but a pungent aftertaste. My curiosity was immediately satisfied and I ducked back into the main office. 19 hours to go, 1334 hours. Alright, I swear I'm hearing a slight clicking noise coming from somewhere in the building. I can only hear it sporadically, and I'm sure it's something totally normal, but given my circumstances, it's definitely making me a bit spooked. 1500 hours. First 8 hours down and I'm really looking forward to this ending. I can't explain how unsettling it is to be stuck in a building full of dead bodies literally just a few feet away from you. I tried eating lunch, but I just didn't have the appetite for it. The rain is coming sporadically, but the clouds are still heavy outside. I was really hoping for some sunshine, but this whole day has a very horror movie vibe to it that I'm not digging. Also, I kept hearing that clicking sound. It's rapid fire and it comes in short bursts. Sounds maybe like high heels on ceramic or something like that, but there's no ceramic floors here. The office area is carpeted and the actual exam room is cement. So I tried clicking on the floor with a pen, but it totally makes a different sound. I'm sure it's a rodent or something. There's bound to be mice or rats in a building that stores human bodies, right? At least I hope so. 1704 hours. Clicking noise again, this time much more obvious. 
It used to be that I'd only really hear it when the audio on the TV died down, but now I can sometimes hear it even over the TV. I did a sweep of the building, which included going into that creepy exam room, but found nothing. 1900 hours. It's been 12 hours now. I've managed to eat some, but it's incredible how little appetite you have when you're a few feet away from a bunch of corpses. I've heard that corpses can burp, or moan, or even move as gases escape the body, but these bodies have been here for too long for any of that. Something I am incredibly grateful for. Listen, put me face to face with something alive any day, but don't mess around with the dead. Me and Infographic Show are still negotiating me doing a ghost hunting challenge episode for you guys. I'm super not keen on anything dead, it just really squeaks me out. I haven't gone in to look at any of the dead bodies. I know all of you are probably wondering when I'd get around to that. You think it's the first thing you'd do if you were in my shoes, right? Well, I did too, until I was actually physically there. Now, the last thing I want is to see what's inside those storage cabinets or whatever they call them. I just kind of want to pretend those corpses don't even exist. But, well, I think my brain has a kind of defect because it has a weird macabre sort of curiosity and once I get that itch, I just can't stop thinking about it until I scratch it. I have been explicitly told not to do this by the staff, but the staff aren't here and there's no cameras, so I braved the freezing cold and found an empty cabinet. Listen, I knew it was a bad idea, I mean, how horror movie cliche could things get, but like I said, when I got that curious itch I gotta satisfy it. Once I got in trouble in a Titanic exhibit in Las Vegas for climbing past the guardrails and touching a part of the hole that had been brought up from the depths, I just wanted to feel that connection to history. I mean, how many people have physically touched the Titanic? Other than me and a bunch of really dead people. I checked to make sure the door wouldn't close on me, and even wedged a few pens into the open door to make sure it couldn't close, and then after a pretty long, pretty hard think, I climbed onto the slab and wheeled myself inside. I wish I could tell you it was an amazing experience. It wasn't. Matter of fact, it was immediately creepy and I very quickly got back out again. I'm not claustrophobic, but knowing that one day I'd be in this same box only dead very quickly made me want to leave. Honestly, would not recommend trying this one at home, kids. 2100 hours. I haven't heard that clicking in a while, so I was probably right. It was probably just a mouse or a rat, maybe even raccoons. It's been raining throughout the day, so I wouldn't be surprised if small animals were trying to find shelter in this old building. It's well past dark outside, and it's sort of starting to dawn on me I have to go to sleep here soon. Sure, being up and watching TV during the daytime in a morgue is one thing, but when it gets dark and you realize you're going to have to spend the night there, well, that's another thing entirely. I tried to eat, but once more the presence of all these bodies makes it impossible to have an appetite, and the food tastes like ash. Also, I can't get the smell of chemicals and death out of my nostrils after climbing into that cabinet. I mean, in hindsight, I doubt they cleaned them very well after being used, if at all. That was definitely monumentally stupid. 2141 hours. The clicking's back. Uh, this time I swear it was coming from one direction and then from another, and definitely from the examination room area. You know, the place with the corpses? While this makes my mouse and rat hypothesis more likely, I guess it makes a reanimated corpse hypothesis just as likely. Comforting thought. 2300 hours. I've been trying to stay up on purpose because I really don't want to sleep in here, but I can feel myself getting sleepier and sleepier. I can't stress how little I am enjoying this challenge. Put me in the wild, out on the streets, facing down another bear, literally anything but being around dead people. And the clicking, it just keeps happening. Sometimes faintly, other times much more pronounced. It happens every 15 or 20 minutes or so, and if I walk into the exam room while it's happening, it stops. I kept the lights on in there and in the office area, Matt, but this is 1970s lighting and honestly, I feel like it just makes things creepier. I'm gonna try to sleep for a bit, and I've set up my sleeping bag in a far corner of the room where I can see the rest of the building pretty well. Hopefully this is not my final entry from the land of the living. 0 to 28 hours. I am not going back to sleep, and I am seriously considering breaking a window to get out. I slept for a while, but I got woken up about a half an hour ago suddenly. I'm not sure why, I vaguely remember having a dream of being inside this building and somebody I couldn't quite see was trying to get my attention. Can't explain it, weird dream stuff, but this person was distorted and looked like a blur, and when they spoke it was all muffled. Then they grabbed me and shook me and I woke up. Very creepy stuff. Just a few seconds after waking up I heard the clicking noise again, 
It was much louder without the TV on, and here's the thing, I had kept the TV on on purpose so the noise of real living people would make me feel better as I slept. I even checked to make sure it had no auto turn off function enabled, and yet, when I woke up, the TV was off. Also, my laptop was turned so that when I opened it back up, the screen was facing away from me. I very clearly remember just shutting the laptop closed while obviously facing me because I had just been writing to you guys on it. But when I woke up and opened it, it was facing away. This is all really starting to be too much. I really don't do well with ghost crap. I'm still terrified of the Poltergeist movies. 0 5, 10 hours. I haven't been able to sleep, or maybe I just don't want to. I've stayed up watching TV and turned all the lights in the building back on. I'm officially on high alert. It's all thanks to that damn clicking sound. I got a hunch about a half an hour ago when I heard it again and I went into the exam room. I started tapping on things with my fingernail. I tried the floor. Nope, not the red pitch. I tried an examination table. Again, not quite right. I tried one of those medical storage chests. Nope, not it. Then I tried one of the cabinets the bodies are kept in, and it sounded almost right. I opened it a little bit, catching a glimpse of very purple toes in the process, and tapped on the metal lid from the inside. Perfect match. Listen, this thing still might be a mouse or a rat or maybe a big roach, but I am officially done with this challenge. The only thing keeping me from prying open a window and trying to crawl out is the fact that I know in less than two hours I'll be let out and I really don't want to cause trouble for the show. But I am beyond done with this challenge. This is my final entry, and I'm spending most of my time here with my back to the wall and TV lined up so I can keep an eye on the exam room doors and all those corpses on the other side. Post Challenge Update So a few days after this very stupid challenge, I was talking to a friend about everything that went on in that morgue, and he was very curious about the laptop being turned around. He suggested I check the laptop's camera roll because apparently spirits sometimes can activate digital cameras and make themselves known that way. The laptop I was using is pretty old because I never take my nice laptop out in the field with me on these challenges. I never used the camera on that thing, and the last time I did must have been a few years ago. But well, I did find pictures, just like my friend said I might, and they don't make me feel any better about my experience. So okay, here's picture one. Sorry about the bad quality. Like I said, it's an old laptop and low light didn't help matters. You can clearly see the glow of the TV, which must have still been on at that point. Now here's picture two. TV is still on, but did you catch that? Here, look at picture one and picture two back to back. See how the perspective of the photo very clearly shifts? Something obviously moved the laptop in between photos. Now for the reason I will never do a ghost hunt challenge video for the infographic show ever in my life. Picture number three. You can see how the image is fuzzy, like the camera doesn't quite know what to focus on. Or maybe because those big boots appeared suddenly as the photo was being taken. You can even tell the laptop moved pretty dramatically right before the photo was taken. Listen, I can tell you that I wasn't wearing boots that night, and there was only me in that morgue for the entire stay. But I understand if you don't believe me. As for me, I'm officially done with anything related to dead people or ghosts for infographics. They do not pay me enough for this. Want more creepiness? Check out when our challenge guy probably heard Bigfoot and almost fought a bear in 72 hours in the forest alone. Or click this other video instead.